Remember the very first Elfie drone? It was a bestseller at only $30. It flew great, but the video was pretty terrible and unusable. Well, there's a new Elfie. It's called the H47. It's bigger, it flies better, and it's actually HD, all for under $40. So fresh in to us today from a new company that we're working with called geekbuying.com is this new drone. This is the JJRC H47 and it's the next in a long line of really impressive drones which obviously come in at a very budget price but they're getting better and better. I don't think it'll be long before JJRC or Eashin, because they are I think the same manufacturer, produce something that is comparable to the DJI Spark. So this drone retails at about $39, which is about £43, and it's basically an upgrade of the previous model, which was the H37. The box and packaging isn't exactly beautiful, it's very, very basic, but the packaging is only one aspect of a drone, and I'd rather manufacturers spend more time on designing the drone itself than on a box. And we've got a lovely little hold-all package. Now this is new. Most of the Eashin or JJRC drones have just arrived in a basic uh, bubble wrapped sort of vacuum plastic box, but this one I actually get a really nice, good quality zippable case. And look at that with a nice red trim inside as well. So that's quite nice. Not only do you have to just stick your drone in your backpack anymore and um, potentially things get broken, you've got a nice way to transport it. Inside is our lovely drone. Look at the finish on that. Now that is a hell of a step up from the previous JJRC or Eashin drones. Got a really nice glossy feel on the back of that. We'll have a closer look at the drone in a minute. Now comment in the comments section below if this drone reminds you of a certain other drone from a company called DJI. Other things we've got in the box are this new one-handed controller. Now I think this is really cool and I'm looking forward to giving this a go and we'll talk all about that later. We've got an odd pack of lavender. Now that really is quite random. I guess that's to give it a nice fragrance uh, during shipping, but I don't know, I'm not sure what I'll do with that. Obviously an instruction manual as well. We've got a USB charging cable with a little pin on the back. And finally, we've got a little accessories bag with some spare props, some little sticky pads, and also a screwdriver. So now a closer look at the drone. And as I mentioned, the quality difference between this and the previous JJRC and Eashin drones is immense. What a difference. It does feel like they're spending a lot more money in terms of research and development and also production to make a much better rounded product. So we've got this nice glossy cover. Hopefully you've commented below and I'm expecting your comments earlier will say DJI Spark. And I think that's probably what they were going for with these little indents here in the top, which obviously the DJI Spark has as well. Very, very similar. Of course, the functionality is gonna be very different. Anyway, we've got a power button on the top here and one of the unique features of most of these little Elfie drones are the folding arms. And so they fold out like that and they click nicely into place. And uh, this is much bigger than the other selfie Elfie drones as well. Uh, so the overall size of it is slightly larger. On the ends of the folding arms, you can see that we've got brushed motors and they're running a kind of gearbox configuration again. So the motors run parallel to the arms and then there's a small little gearbox on the end which translates that into driving these props. They are brushed motors, so don't expect loads of power, but keep in mind how cheap this quadcopter is. Got the battery underneath here and it's taped in place, so I'm just going to remove that tape uh, and let's have a look. It's actually loose at the moment. We can pull that out. Yeah, there you go. So a tiny, tiny little battery, probably about the same size battery as the previous Elfie drones. And that just slots in the top like that and then slide it in to place. To remove that battery, just press a little release button there and slide it back towards and there it comes out. So that's nice and easy to replace. Probably the Elfie drones normally have about four or five minute flight time. Um, I would recommend ordering some more of these batteries if you do order one of these, just so you get a bit more flight time. On the front, we've got the camera, which you can see here. And now as per the usual Elfie improvements, the camera is tiltable. It goes all the way down to 90 degrees facing downwards, but remember it's not controllable via the transmitter. So you have to tilt that before you take off, unfortunately. 
The camera is stated as being 720p quality, but generally these cameras are not quite crystal and clear as that. But apparently the quality is getting better on these Eoshin, so we'll do a video sample during the flight test. It's got some small rubber feet on the underside, and that's really good if you're taking off from a surface like this, because it means that as the props are firing up, you don't get that kind of sliding around effect. It just powers up to the required momentum, and then up it goes. And then finally on the front and also the back, we've got these two clear panels and that's where you get an LED light. So I think we've got red on the back and white on the front. So that should look quite good if we fly this uh, in sort of dark and light. And I'll try and do that during this review. So that's the drone. Overall, really good quality. I'm looking forward to flying this one. Let's have a look at the transmitter that comes with it. Now, Eoshin and JJRC drones generally tend to implement small changes in the actual quadcopters themselves, but this is definitely a big, big change, and I quite like this. Now, you can hold it with either hand. It's not biased to a left or right-handed pilot. Uh, and just looking around the controls on it, so we've got an on and off button on the side here to turn the transmitter on and off. Then on the top, we've got our analog control, which is gonna control our throttle. So in other words, up and down, and also our yaw, so sliding around left and right. The analog control also controls the takeoff and landing. So you press it once to take off and press it again to auto land, and it's gonna automatically ascend and descend the drone for you. We then got four buttons here. Now the top button here, first of all, activates headless mode. That's generally useless on any drone without GPS. So I would ignore that. The next button here is for calibration. So basically you long press that for two seconds and that's gonna start the calibration of the accelerometers within the drone. So do that when it's on a flat surface and before you take off. We've then got this button here, which is for controlling the lights on the drone. So you can actually turn the lights on and off. I think that's gonna be quite fun. And then finally, the button at the bottom is emergency stop. That's good because although you've got the auto land button here, if your drone is flying towards somebody's face, press the auto stop and the props will cut immediately. So that's good for safety. And then finally, on the front here, we've got a trigger button. That's for controlling the sensitivity. So in other words, the sensitivity of the controls here. Pressing it once is for low speed, pressing it again is for high speed. Now, another feature that's hidden about this transmitter is the fact that it's got built-in accelerometers and gyros. So by tilting this controller like this, you actually control the roll and the pitch of the drone. I can't wait to have a go of that. So I think it's time for the flight test and we'll get onto that next. So at the field, and it's a bit of a windy day actually, if I glance up at the trees, there's quite a bit of movement and so I am hiding behind the trees today to try and get a bit of a calm spot. So setup procedure or the order in which you do it is quite important if you want to use the transmitter and the live feed from the phone. You must bind the transmitter first. So with the transmitter off, turn on the drone and you'll get lights flashing on it like that. Then bind the transmitter by turning it on, throttle to full, unthrottle to naught. And now we can start and stop the quad via the transmitter. Now it should be emitting a Wi-Fi signal, so we should be able to connect to it. Give it a few seconds to appear, there it is. UAV, go back to the app, and now we get our live stream. Brilliant, right, so first thing, I'm just gonna take a photo, just so we get a few from the ground. Live stream is really good, I mean, it, it looks HD quality, Okay, I'm gonna calibrate it now by pressing and holding the calibration button for two seconds. Lights flash on the quad, and now they've stopped flashing. So, all good there. Start recording video. Quite excited. Here we go, so I'm gonna press the button once to start the props. Uh, and then just throttle up. Oh, this is so weird. Remember to hold the, the controller level before you go. Okay, here we go. Oh, this is so weird. <laughs> So remember, I'm controlling this now by tilting the controller back and forwards, and it's so responsive. I mean, look at that. Hopefully you can see both on the screen at the same time. Uh, that's really, really impressive. And considering how windy it is here today, it's coping fine. Now by pressing the tr trigger button on the front, I can up the sensitivity. Oh, look at that, that's much better. In fact, I'm gonna go to mode three, press it again. So now it's super sensitive. I mean, it's literally responding as I turn my hand here. 
That is really, really impressive. And it's so quiet. Uh, now by left and right, I can yaw it as well. So let's go on a bit of a fly. Wow. <laughs> this is so weird. It takes a lot of getting used to, especially when it's flying towards you, because obviously then you've got the drone, you've got to tilt your hand very differently, but do you get used to it after a while? It's going to take a few flights. Now headless mode could be useful actually in this scenario, but headless mode generally isn't very good on a drone that doesn't have GPS. Look at those lights on the front as well. We can turn those on and off. Yay. <laughs> By pressing the button on the drone. So let's get a bit of um, altitude. I'm just going to check if our video is still rolling. Yeah, it is. That's good. And I'll put some of that video up on the screen right now as we get some height. So let's try and ascend a little bit. Wow, this thing flies so, so well. And it is windy today, but it's just going beautifully. Look at that. So hopefully you're getting some nice aerial video now. The range is really good as well. I mean, it's quite some distance away here. So I brought it down a bit now. It flies really, really, really well. <laughs> Very impressed. The video quality is, well, it looks impressive anyway. We'll soon find out if it actually is. The control mechanism takes a bit of getting used to, especially when it's facing you, but um, it's really innovative, really, a really nice idea. And the flight time. I mean, we've been flying quite some time now. And yet it's, you know, I think we've got flashing lights in the back, which probably is that our battery life is now starting to die a little bit. But we've had a good long flight time with this. It's so responsive with this hand controller. <laughs> so responsive. So in general, for $40, you now this is really innovative. It's a great idea. It's a very stable flyer, even in wind like we've got today. Um, you know, I don't think you can really go wrong for $40. And compared to the original LFE-E50, which was brilliant and probably one of the best selling quads for a lot of the RC retailers, this is definitely the new king. Right, let's check the auto land and see if it works. So I'm going to fly it over back to my bag. And then press auto land. See if we can get it on spot. Ready? Here we go. Oh, ah, oh, damn, we just missed. <laughs> oh, uh, JJRC Eoshin, you're getting better and better. And certainly this is a, a real good sign of things to come. So yeah, I have to recommend this one for $40 or about 40 pounds, great value. After the outdoor test, I tried the H47 indoors, and this is where it really excels, as it also of course would outdoors in nil wind. The video is buttery smooth, despite there being no video stabilisation, and the quality is better too, because the bitrate isn't being swamped by excessive movement of the drone. Here you can also see that I'm controlling the drone via the app only, instead of using the transmitter. So a very quick summary of this great little drone. At $40 it is great value and it's really well made. It flies great even in wind, but indoors it's even more stable. The package includes a plush carry case and an innovative one-handed transmitter. It can be controlled by the app alone or with the transmitter as well, so it's nice to have that flexibility. It gives a good flight time of about 5 minutes plus. The video is genuinely 720p, even in the live stream on the app whilst you're flying, which isn't very latent either. The Wi-Fi range is impressive and the live stream remains pretty solid when flying. The control range is also very good when using the transmitter. And there are just a few negatives. It doesn't handle heavier wind particularly well. There is unfortunately no video stabilisation, therefore the video can be a bit choppy if the drone's wobbling around a bit. And finally, you can't adjust the video camera angle in flight. But once again, a reminder that this drone costs just $40, which is about £35, and I think it's worth every penny. We hope that you've enjoyed the review. Links to the products are in the video description, and please do give the video a thumbs up. Comment below with your thoughts, and finally, please, please, please subscribe, because the more subscribers that we have, the more drones that we get to review for you guys. Thanks very much for watching.